Okay, can people hear me? Yes, you can. Hi. Welcome to Using Design Principles for a Better Developer Experience. My name is Michelle Tepper. A lot of people call me Misha. You can call me Misha, too, if you like. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. So let me know if I start talking too fast. Uh, and here is my Salesforce email and my Twitter. But know that I mostly tweet about my dog. Uh, the forward-looking statement slide, you've seen this already several times. You don't need me to tell you not to make purchasing decisions based on this. Uh, but I am hoping that I can give you some tools to take away for free uh, to make your products better. Because what if you could drive alignment across your cross-functional team, help everyone in the organi organization feel connected to and invested in the product vision. And also, make your roadmap prioritization easier. What is this wizardry, you ask me? Well, it's design principles. Uh, so what are design principles? Design principles are value statements that articulate essential aspects of a product or service to help your team build great coherent experiences. And I want to underline there the word coherent. These essential aspects are the reasons your users love your product and what sets it apart from your competitors. And so to demonstrate that, I'm going to show you two sets of publicly available design principles from two companies in the same space, which is project management. This is the design principles for Asana and Trello. And you can see here, there are some similarities in those principles. They both talk about interpersonal relations and collaboration. Uh, they both talk about being direct and staying out of the customer's way. But just looking at it, these, you get a different sense of the two organizations and of the sort of product that might get designed by these organizations. Um, it's also worth noting that just the format is different. And some people will tell you a design principle has to only be one word, or a design principle has to be a sentence. It has to have five, you have to have fewer. It, I'm here to tell you that does not matter. Uh, what matters is that you get alignment uh, around those, those principles. Uh, for example, uh, a company I worked at uh, like a dozen years ago now, we had one design principle, which I didn't even know to call a design principle back then. It was a smart home company, and our design principle was, how would the Jetsons do it? And obviously, we had the shared cultural context uh, as a group of Americans of roughly the same age working together to all have seen the Jetsons. But it made it very easy if we're trying to think of what would be the most futuristic, easiest way to do something. Someone would say, how would the Jetsons do it? And that was how we got to alignment. Because right, everybody on the team comes with their own perspective, their own biases, their own lenses and priorities. And what design principles can do is provide another lens and a place where you have already agreed on what the priorities are so that as a group, you can move towards alignment more easily because yeah, it has to be flexible in, in this case. Um, and how are we going to work together towards that shared goal? Um, you can also, and this is something of a personal hobby horse uh, of mine, you can do roadmap prioritization using uh, design principles as well. Now, let's imagine a fictional company whose design principles are truth, justice, and the American way. Obviously, there are certain things that have to get built before other things, right? You can't build the attic if you don't have the foundation. But a lot of times, uh, when you're working on a product roadmap, there's a lot of, well, what could we get done 
in time for the next release date. And so what comes out is just a whole bunch of stuff. And it's great stuff, but there isn't a story around it. It's not coherent. And if, however, you use your design principles as part of the discussion around building that roadmap, you can theme your release. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be all one thing, but if you tell the story of, yes, this is our release where we're really focused on truth, suddenly it makes it easier for you and your team to prioritize, and also you have a better story to tell your customers about why this major release is happening the, the, way, that, the way and the when it is. So, um, it feels a little bit like magic when you do it right. Um, I had a whole story here about <laughs> working with a team at a previous company where, where I helped them see that, that, that we had a roadmap item. We had a roadmap, and if we just changed it a little bit, we could theme it. And the reaction was wizardry. Sheer wizardry. And that was sort of the moment where I became sold on design principles for life. So Salesforce has a set of design principles for the Lightning design system. Clarity, efficiency, consistency, and beauty. But in DX, we have web UIs that are not in Lightning, like Heroku. And we also have UIs that are not web at all, like CLIs and APIs. So we needed another set of design principles that were specific to our interfaces and our users. And here they are. Uh, magical. We make simple things, complex things simple, and simple things automatic. Uh, opinionated. Our products feel alive and responsive and help users achieve quick wins. Uh, and three, progressively powerful, which is users can always find the right level of power and abstraction they need. Uh, I always talk about you know, uh, popping the hood and being able to get uh, into the wires, even though, as previously said, I live in New York City where nobody owns a car. <laughs> so those are pretty great, but the question is, how do we get here? And how can you, at your organization, develop design principles that work for you. Uh, and I'm going to tell this story. In telling it, I want to start by giving a shout out to Ariana Escobar, who's a lead designer on my team, who did a tremendous amount of work on this project. She has a blog post on the Salesforce UX me uh, Medium blog that goes into a lot of detail around this, if, if you want more detail. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be here, so I just wanted to make sure that you all knew her name and her involvement. So the first step is, when do I even know that a design principle is right? And for my team, it was, we had a lot of people talking about, like, well, we have very high standards for our, for our work, and everyone knows that, or we have a way that we do things here. And I wasn't necessarily sure we were all saying the same thing when we talked about that. And I said, we need a sense, we need a set of design principles so that we can take that general sense of our organization and start to put it into words. The next step was to involve everybody, right? And it's product, so it's very easy to say, okay, we need product engineering and design. But we also want support. We want marketing, we want sales, we want everybody who talks to the customer. Because remember, part of what makes it our design principles is that it's what the customer loves about us. So every team that talks to your customer uh, should be invited into the process. And this also is a great way to make them feel part of the vision, obviously. Uh, there is a story. Uh, about John F. Kennedy visiting NASA in the early 60s and going up to a janitor and giving like, the politician glad hand and he says, oh, no, what do you do around here? And the janitor says, Mr. President, I'm helping to send a man to the moon. 
Now, this story is almost certainly apocryphal, but it's a great story because it shows what happens when an organization is aligned around a vision, and one really great way to make that vision explicit and actionable is design principles. So, the next step is to get people's ideas. Uh, early in my career, I had a creative director from Australia who hated the word brainstorming. He said, brainstorming is just people sitting around in bean bags and nothing ever happens. Uh, and so I am like constitutionally unable to say brainstorming, but that is basically what we did. We started by getting all these people into a virtual room together and get their ideas onto a, uh, we used a tool called Figma, which has a collaboration tool called FigJam. Uh, a, a set of post-its. Um, but then the next step, which is what differentiates it from classic brainstorming, is starting to build out affinities between them, discussing what the points are and clustering them, and doing the dot voting so that we can prioritize the output and start to gather what we think is really relevant. The next step was something that Ariana introduced that I'd never seen before, but I'm going to do like from now on, which is that once we come to uh, principles that each group agreed on, we articulated them more. We talked about it from the user perspective and the internal perspective, as a user and our product should. So I can say simple, and my colleague Jim can say simple, and we can mean entirely different things by starting to articulate it and do another round of dot voting. We got really clear on what we meant by simple. Once we've done that, we get another round like this with our executives, but instead of starting with a blank slate, we started with the outputs of the previous work. And this is actually a pretty great way, anytime you need to build consensus uh, across a large hierarchical organization, just keep doing different versions of the same thing up the chain until you come to like that final boss and you can say everybody ha has been, uh, been part of the process. So we took what we had to our executives and we said, does this seem right? What have we left out? And what do you see as the priorities with your greater sense of the wider organization? Uh, and we got some great feedback from that. And then our team wrote up uh, a draft of the principles and shared it back out for feedback. And again, this is partially about, again, making sure that everybody felt uh, involved and consulted, right? We want to make sure that people know that they're part of the process, that this is their principle as well. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we'd gotten it right, right? Um, and then, once we had a final agreed-upon draft, the next piece was to start to tell the world, which is, quite frankly, why I'm here today, right? This is part of, this is part of that last step of telling everyone. But the first person who talked about it for us was our SVP of engineering, Gail Frederick. Gail did a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our chief design officer, Justin McGuire, at, at the last Dreamforce, where they just talked about the design principles and why they mattered and how excited she was that we now had them for the organization. And having that sort of really public buy-in from engineering leadership right from the beginning was so crucial for us. Um, and just a great way to tell the story. Uh, another way uh, is that we created swag. I don't know if you can see it from here, but the back of the hoodie I'm wearing says, Opinionated Magic. And everybody who is part of the DX team got one. So even if you hadn't been paying attention to any of this, you've just been coding, suddenly you got this hoodie in the mail, 
and it gave us a great opportunity to tell the story uh, again. And I always say that stuff isn't really real in a corporate setting until there's swag for it. So coming back, these are our design principles, which we shared with the world at the end of last year. So it's all very nice, but how does it work for us? Well, I can tell you right now, I'm working on a, a North Star document for a very senior exec. And the phrase, our design principles, magical, opinionated, and progressively powerful, shape this initiative, occur right on the front page. And you see the words magical and opinionated throughout as key things that we are trying to achieve with our long-term vision. It's also great in just day-to-day -day meetings. When you're trying to decide between column A and column B, sometimes, particularly in the enterprise space, it can be very easy to say, well, why not both? And so someone else will pipe up and say, but we're supposed to be opinionated. And that means that we have to make a decision, which generally leads to making better software. Uh, I really hope that I'll be able to come back at the next TDX next year and tell you even more stories about how these have shaped our organization for the better. But for now, it's just been a really important shift in how we work together. And I want all of you to think about how you might bring that to your organizations uh, as well. Uh, so here are those steps, again, for people who like taking photos of, of steps. Um, and I really am rooting for everybody to bring it back home and implement it in your organization. Uh, and I would be delighted to talk to you further about it over at Camp Design, um, where you can meet meet me and other designers, gain design skills, and share your story. That Medium blog is where you can find Ariana's post with all the details of how we did this. And whew, thank you all very much.